Welcome to Online Offscript, where we discuss trending topics and all things new on the internet. I'm Eliza Philo, Digital Ads Coordinator. And I'm Irene Mashai, the Business Development Director. This week, we're talking about female entrepreneurship. Our guest today is Leslie Washington, Digital Marketing Strategist and Manager. Leslie graduated from SCAD in Fashion Marketing and Management and with a minor in Graphic Design. She's curated her own brand and develops marketing strategies for startups, small businesses, major brands, and agencies along with implementing and managing those strategies. Thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you all? Doing great. Um, I think we can just go ahead and jump into it and maybe with a question that will give um, people an, an idea of who you are, how you got started, etc. So can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to start your own business and kind of what challenges you did face during those early stages? For sure. Um, yeah, so I launched my business um, literally in the beginning of pandemic. So at the time, um, I was a few months uh, laid off from my previous job and I was freelancing here and then. Um, and then COVID happened and I was like, OK, this is kind of my opportunity to kind of do my own thing. It's like the whole world is shut down. Um, I have more time. I, I'm, I've been in marketing forever. So it's like, why not try to do it? Um, and I spent a lot of years also working under a few people. Um, agencies, big businesses, and I was like, I can, I can do this myself. I can, I can try it and see how it goes. And I think this is the perfect time to to do it. For sure, I feel like a lot of people do say that about COVID that you know has made them start their own businesses and become entrepreneurs, which is really exciting to see. But I'm curious about like you know your background behind fashion and things like that. Um, I know you had a vintage clothing company. How does that kind of influence your marketing company today? For sure. Yeah. So um, when I launched my, yeah, so this is my second rodeo of starting a business. Um, but yes, my first business was Chop Vintage. And at the time I launched it when I was just also starting my digital marketing career with Alternative Apparel. Um, and at the time I was like wearing a lot of hats at Alternative um, in the marketing industry, but there wasn't like, I didn't have a creative outlet. So Chop Vintage served as my creative outlet. Um, I was also like grieving the passing of my dad. So it's like, I needed something to to do um and, and as the guinea pig for all things creative and marketing and you know i was running like a website and updating everything doing photos i was um doing emails copywriting but also i was doing the same at alternative i was very a part of like the photo shoots that we were doing i was writing copy i was like project i was like basically learning as i went in those first um i would say four years um, with Chop Vintage. And I think now it, it kind of like, I was able to like really just see how people responded to social media and marketing. And, you know, I spent a lot of time building up that following with Chop Vintage. Um, and I figure why not, I can definitely do it again um, with, for something I've been doing for a long time, which would be marketing. So yeah, it kind of came naturally. It just kind of, it made sense. And, and I, I figured, yeah, we were in COVID. It's just like, like, what else will I do? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I feel like COVID was a time when people kind of like shed their imposter syndrome um, and they were like, I'm just going to do this thing. Did you feel any sort of imposter syndrome when you first started? Were you like, I don't know how to do this? Or did you kind of just go full force and say, what the hell, let's do it? Yeah, um, I I definitely had imposter syndrome. Um, yeah, I mean, for definitely the first few months and, and even still now is like, you know, like you kind of get in this space where you like, you know what you're doing, especially something you've done for such a long time. Um, but it's very scary putting yourself out there and kind of putting the attention on yourself is just like, oh, this is what I do and like hire me. And this is how, and, like, even though I, I really kept, um, you know, the marketing side of myself very hidden when I was doing top vintage. I mean, people, like they would ask me, but I was like, okay, like I do this thing, but it wasn't something that was really shared. So definitely um, I was pushing myself a little bit more um, yeah, the first, the second go around with my business. So, I mean, yeah, it was definitely very scary. And, and I definitely still get a few insecurities um, when you're doing it, but you just kind of have to put yourself out there. And, and I, I feel like you don't, like, if you don't try, you like never know kind of thing. And it's like, it's really cliche, but it's just like, you know, and I've, you know, it's kind of like, just, just try it and see what happens. And if you fail, try something else. If that fails, try something else again. Um, yeah. And just keep going basically. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, now that you're like, 
I guess, a two-time entrepreneur with multiple businesses, what would you say are kind of like your favorite things about being an entrepreneur, you know, something that you've gained from being an entrepreneur that you might not have gained, um, say, if you were still part, working as part of a marketing company? Yeah, um, I definitely think it, it taught me like self-discipline. <laughs> like, I think, I think it's definitely hard. Um, you know, it, it, it's very different. Like, so if you're working for someone else, of course, like you're have, you have a set schedule, you're working with a lot of people, um, and structure is always a good thing. But then when you're working for yourself, especially, you know, at home, being in COVID, it's like, how do you keep yourself on a schedule? Um, so that was something I definitely like struggle with. Um, because, you know, some things that's like really important to me is like, work-life balance and making sure I still do work, but also take care of myself and, you know, have made things for all of my, my passions. Um, so yeah, definitely staying on the schedule was just something that, um, yeah, I definitely struggle with. And, and I would have never realized like I have to actually be on the schedule um, and get things done. So work is done. But um, yeah, I would say that's probably like one of, yeah, the bigger struggles I would say. And also probably just staying motivated because um, sometimes you do get like slower periods of, um, yeah, I mean, you're basically freelancing. So it's like sometimes you get slower periods of work and sometimes you get like high increases of work. So you're just kind of keeping that momentum even when you're a little bit slower is definitely a challenge at times as well. Yeah. You mentioned a lot of like a, a balance between work and your personal life. And I think for a lot of people who do start their own businesses, that can be a really big struggle, at least for people that I know who have. Um, can you kind of share some of the ways that you make that a priority is that a priority for you um and how do you think that affects the work that you do yeah um yeah it's, it's a yeah work-life balance I've, I've always believed in that like for years like I, I think taking care of yourself is very important and basically when you take care of yourself you can be better to other people you can be better at your work be better at what you're passionate about um you kind of show up better when you are taking care of yourself um, and for me, I like, I, I'm a big believer of like yoga and like meditation. Like I love also like really hot yoga as well. It's very intense. Um, but that's another way it challenges me to kind of like get outside my zone and get out of my head. Um, I would say like, yeah, neighborhood walks was something I kind of picked up in COVID as well that I've kind of kept up. Um, just like walking as much as possible, getting outside, getting as much sun as possible. Um, and also just like listening to myself, like listening to my body. So if I'm feeling like really out of it or feeling really tired or just feeling like not inspired, like just listening to what I need um, and kind of like honoring that has always been pretty important to me. Definitely. And it's very important just when you're um, running a business as, as well. Um, yeah. I'll say probably the main things. <laughs> Definitely. Um, kinda, yeah. I'm curious about your experience with starting um, your marketing company and that whole kind of thing. So did you yeah. find that like, you know, it was, cause I did take, take a look at your website and I saw there was some pretty big names under your client list, which was really exciting to see. Did you find it kind of difficult to break into that space and, you know, build those relationships with those bigger kind of companies? Or did you find that you, that smaller companies were more willing to work with an entrepreneur like yourself? Um, That's a great question, actually. Um, I, I honestly, there's not really a big, difference between the two as far as like bigger companies and smaller brands um i would say both of them kind of found me through most of them have found me through like word of mouth um of course good seo on the website um and posting but i mean i think there are different ways in course and how you handle each relationship like of course like if it's a bigger company um depending on what you're launching or what you're kind of th being thrown into like the workload could be a little bit more different than like a smaller business um i have found with smaller businesses the um, I guess the pacing's a little bit slower, where it's kind of like faster, the timeline's shorter. Um, we're kind of pushing more faster. Um, those are kind of the main differences. But as far as like, I guess, attracting the talent um, or speaking with them, I've, I've kind of handled my processes the same as far as, you know, how I, you know, do my consultation calls and uh, asking questions and just making sure that, you know, we are all set for success and we all meet our goals for the campaigns that are happening or what we're actually uh, are pushing out. Great. And do you have any, I guess that's kind of piggybacking off of that. Do you have advice for people who are trying to get started and make it on their own um, words of encouragement or just kind of lessons that you learned that you were like, oh, I wish I had known this when I first started? Yeah. Um, well, I know that's a big question. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a big question, but a great question. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I would say definitely do all the things that you're passionate about. I think I meet a lot of people who are like, oh, I want to do A, B, C, D, but there's not really a passion behind it. And then there's like a frustration that something's not working out to 
what they want to be. So I would suggest like just making sure that whatever you're striving to be or what you want to become, just be passionate about it because it's going to be a hard journey. There's going to be like ups and downs. Um, you can't really predict it. Um, and I would say just keep going. Like, it's just like, you know, it's unpredictable. I think in all things that we do, like, you know, life is very unpredictable and you can't really control anything. Um, so as long as you're like, you have that passion and that drive, I, I think you'll be good. And just to keep going. Like, honestly, yeah, just just keep going. And of course, like, you know, after a while, if you're like, I actually don't want to do this. I think that's okay, too, to be like, I don't actually want this anymore. And I'm going to try something different. So just being able to pivot and shift and, yeah, just be flexible. I guess on the flip side, um, obviously, there's a lot of things that you've overcome and things like that. But what are some of, you know, maybe some misconceptions that people have about becoming a female entrepreneur like yourself. You know, I know people obviously have lots of big goals and aspirations for what they want to do, but you know, maybe there might be some misconceptions that people have when they do start their business. Is there anything that you've kind of thought of that you was like, oh, I didn't expect that to happen. And, oh, I didn't know that this was gonna go this way. Um, and how did you kind of address those misconceptions when they started to come up? Yeah, um, okay, I'm gonna try to remember the whole question, but just let me know if I forget anything. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, okay, sorry. So first question, oh, just like misconceptions and just kind of starting your own business, right? Um, yeah. Oh, what was the last part? I'm sorry. Things that you didn't like expect to happen, misconceptions you had about starting a new business, yeah. Yeah, Um. so I think maybe like the biggest misconception, misconception I've heard about is just kind of like starting a business and thinking immediately you'll see something like different. So, so a lot of people are like, oh, like I, want to make this amount of money in the first month and this much in the next year. And like, of course it's great to have those goals, but also you'd be very realistic. Like with the new business is like, there are a lot of things you have to work out. Cause it's not kind of, it's not this one size fit all formula with every business that you have. Right. Um, and I knew like when I started my business, I had already worked for a lot of small companies, agencies, and I've seen like, and, and a lot of times I step a lot of their processes as well. Um, so I was kind of like used to like, okay, I know that this can go wrong here. This could be not work um, because I already kind of tested it with other places I've worked and just with other kind of like, you know, building the departments. Um, I'm trying to see if this is something that I didn't expect. Um, I, I do think starting out just being like first year in COVID, I did think that like, I would have no clients. <laughs> like I was like, the world is quiet. Like everyone's <laughs> getting laid off. Like everybody's holding on to their money. And also I was like, I just haven't again, put myself out in this way before, like in the marketing way of like, Hey, I'm doing this for my, myself and it's not closed this time. It's, it's actually marketing. Um, so, you know, just being able to shift and know that like, I'm, you know, no longer doing clothing, but here's the other thing I've been doing, blah, blah, all those things. Um, and, and actually, yeah, I was pretty busy that first. I mean, I was, I would say probably up until this past February, I've been pretty consistently busy for about like two years um, or two and a half years, just like constantly getting clients and a lot of people who are like, Hey, we have been, um, you know, we figured out our brand in person, but for some reason, because we're online, we haven't, we've ignored this and we need help. And you know, how do we make this pivot? So I, I mean, yeah, that was something I just didn't expect. Like I just didn't expect to be so busy. Like honestly, I expect like no one to show up for at least two years. And then I was like, oh wait, actually people are here and I have to work and I have to, um, you know, figure out my processes really fast. Cause you know, I, yeah, cause I think I was still, um, you know, what would be the best way to kind of handle clients being kind of like the only person doing work. Um, yeah, it was yeah, it was definitely a lot of uh, figuring out in the beginning, and I yeah, I just didn't expect it. It's funny you should say that because I would have expected the opposite actually. Because I know during COVID, yeah, everyone was inside, but everyone was looking at their screens more. So like yes. having you know marketing clients would probably be a quite lucrative business at that time because yeah. everyone's watching their screens, watching content. TikTok was rising rapidly that year yeah. too. So <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you did have loads of clients because you know that's kind of the only place that people could focus their attention at that time. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and honestly, I think self-sabotage was just really real. It was like, oh, this is not gonna happen. Like, it's just like, uh, you know, everybody's just, yeah, I, I just, you know, yeah, you know, you just, you're, you're like, you don't think something's gonna happen and you're like, oh, actually, yeah, this makes sense. But yeah, you're right, it, it was a very, like, everybody was paying more attention and was definitely more online. And, uh, you know, of course, there were businesses, of course, that, 
yeah, they needed to, to act fast on the digital marketing round and they needed help. So yeah, it was definitely a real thing. Nice. I'm glad that you're so um, transparent about all the struggles. It's comforting to know that. <laughs> you feel them too. <laughs> yes. Um, you mentioned brand, like figuring out your brand a little while ago. Can you walk us through what that looks like? Did you, before you started, did you have kind of an idea of what you wanted or did you kind of have to figure that out on the fly? And what did that process look like? Yeah, um, and branding as far as like my colors and like copy voice, all of those yeah, things are yeah. kind of like how you just want to like come across to clients. Like, what's your website will look like? Like your yeah, social media, just your the your the embodiment of your brand, I guess. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, and that was actually now that I think about it, it was probably one of my struggles before I launched because I yeah, cause basically. Um, yeah, and I'll hop back into it. But basically, like when I started, I, I spent like three months like doing my branding and launching. And then from there, it was, you know, yeah, here and on, here and out. But I was struggling with the idea of because I because I was so well known for Chop Vintage, if I should keep the branding very similar to Chop or I completely pivot and do something else. Um, and I did play within kind of more of like those color schemes. And like I use a lot of like shapes in Chop Vintage, like logo. Um, and I still do love shapes, but I just, I, I felt like I was a little bit more grown, I think, um, as far as, like, I mean, of course, as a person and also branding, like I, you know, I started CHOP when I was 25 and, and now I'm almost 35 and I, I'm this colorful person and I'm very like, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's like, it's, yeah, I'm a very colorful person and my branding for CHOP was very much like black, white geometric shapes and iridescent and I, I feel like I just needed something more um so I kind of played on like the notes of like iridescence within my personal website so kind of bringing in like the shades of pink and like little shades of orange and red um but then I still wanted it to be kind of a little bit more like modern and clean and not so crazy so that is so it's definitely something to figure out but I just felt like it didn't it could still be fun without it being like so much um but also not exactly be branding was so that was kind of, so that was kind of something I I was scared that it would be so different than chop which it should because it's different businesses but it's the same person and face behind the brand so I just was like trying to figure out what um yeah that branding looked like and honestly it just was playing with color figuring out what looked best and what felt like me um I did study graphic design so I'm able to kind of like see fonts and prints and be like cool like this feels like me or no like I don't like a sans serif and like all those things um, so that kind of made it a little bit easier to kind of be able to play with those colors and fonts and, and figure out what, yeah, felt like me. For sure. Um, I had this question that I really wanted to ask actually. So, yeah. um, being that I'm also a female BIPOC person in marketing, how, what kind of challenges have you faced yourself? Um, and how did you kind of overcome those challenges as well? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so definitely being like, yeah, BIPOC in the marketing tech e-commerce field um, is definitely dominated by a lot of, um, I don't know, I would say like older men, more more male dominated. Um, and definitely the places I've worked is definitely have been mostly like white spaces, older men, people who have been, you know, in the field forever, but, you know, then here millennial comes and, you know, and we're like, hey, uh, this is what we're going to try to do and change up things. And I think um, change is very different for a lot of people. Um, so that was like something I've always kind of struggled with, like just, of course, being a black woman um, in those spaces and definitely being like a little bit more, um, outspoken, um, is always, yeah, that's, I think that's always like a challenge, but, um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think, I don't know, I kind of beat it by showing up as my true self and try not to hide myself or make myself smaller. Um, any place that doesn't kind of accept me for who I am, I, you know, I stay away from it. It's definitely something that's very real. It's just like, you know, something's been done for so long, but then things change and, people have other ideas and new people come on the scene and different experiences. Um, and it could be hard at times, but yeah, it's definitely a, a real thing. And I, and I will admit maybe in the last like four or five years, I have been seeing more like BIPOC people in those spaces, which has been very refreshing. Cause I mean, yeah, starting out in this industry in, in I don't know, 2012, I mean, 2013, it was, yeah. It, I mean, no one really looked like me. And, and if we did, we, it wasn't, in New Orleans, like it wasn't, I lived in Atlanta for a long time, so I didn't really see it that much in Atlanta. 
um, yeah, it just was a very, yeah, I, I didn't really see myself in those spaces, um, probably up until recently. So it's, it's good to know that, um, yeah, I mean, I know we exist and I know it's here and I'm, I'm glad to see that, you know, we're being hired and included and all of those things. Yeah, I can definitely resonate with that because, and it's definitely getting better, but oftentimes you might be in those spaces. And like you said, there's not a lot of us in those types of spaces. And so oftentimes people who may be um, not in your company, who know your position will downplay who you are in the company and assume that because you're a woman in general, or because mm-hmm. you're a BIPOC woman at that, it's like, you must be not a decision maker in the business that you're in. Um, and so exactly. having to speak up and be your true self, like you had mentioned, goes a long way in showing people that, hey, no, I am a decision maker. I want to learn about mm-hmm. your business. I can be helpful. I'm not just mm-hmm. this kind of lower level person, so to speak. You know, right. and, um, yeah. like you said, being your true self and just being outspoken sometimes, it goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Have there been any for people sure. that you felt like during, maybe just when you started, but also now that, you felt like you've looked up to or you've looked to for guidance um, within the field or outside of the field? Yeah. Um, or like a mentor or people that you modeled your business after? You don't, there's had, doesn't have to be an answer, but I'm just curious. Yeah, no, no, that is a great question. Um, I have to think about this. I, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a few people, of course, I can't think of them all right now, but I know I do have a friend, uh, one of my closest friends, actually, she is also very similar in a way of like, um, we've had a lot of shifts and pivots in our lives. Like I also, I met her um, at like a pop-up market when I was doing vintage stuff and she was like making bags and she's also recently kind of like switched and she just basically has started like, a lot of businesses as well. Um, her mom has started this, this, and I've kind of, and I've definitely have like asked her opinion on a few things of like, oh, like if I'm I'm trying to do this thing, I'll what do you think about this? Or you know, hey, can you look look this over? So like, she's always been kind of inspiring to me in that way. Um, and she's just like, it's really awesome. Like she just knows her stuff, and um, and, yeah, we have very similar values and ideals. And I'm just like, yeah, Rachel's great. My friend's Rachel. Um, but yeah, she's awesome. Um, I try to think like anyone in like maybe the professional sense or like any celebrities, um, not with anyone I can think of, but there has, like, I'm a part of a few, like, Facebook groups where it's, like, a bunch of, like, lady entrepreneurs of all, like, levels, like, there are people who are just, like, starting out all the way up to people who have been, like, featured in, like, Essence Magazine and Forbes, and it's, like, being able to kind of have that camaraderie and, like, talk and be able to share also, like, business tips and kind of brainstorm have been very actually helpful for me as well, um, definitely when launching the business as well. Like I, I, I remember posting in that, and it's very active too. Like I remember posting in that group and being like, hey, I just launched my business. This is what I do. Please like look at my website and let me know if you have any feedback. Um, and that was scary in itself. Cause I was like, I've never posted in this group, but I need like, I just need like a, a third opinion, I guess. Um, and yeah, and it, it's just been very helpful. And I, I think crucial in my business just being a part of that group. Cause I've also have found clients through that group. Um, I've just gotten tips. I've shared my own tips with people. It's just like a great, like community space on Facebook. Um, but yeah, I can't really think of anyone else like kind of professionally. Um, I think modeled my business against is kind of accumulation of a lot of places I've worked and just being able to kind of be able to like realize what worked in those spaces and what didn't work and being able to like apply those things that did work um, that we put in place to my own business is kind of like how I've, yeah, kind of uh, started that process. It's funny that we're talking about um, mentors and people that we admire in the kind of female entrepreneurship space, because right before we actually had this call, Leslie, me and Eliza were talking about Slutty Vegan, the restaurant chain, oh, yeah. oh, and that's mm-hmm. owned by Pinky Gold, who's a black female entrepreneur. And it started, mm-hmm. I think, with one location in Atlanta, and now it's like multiple locations across multiple different states. But yes. um, I, I think I've seen an interview with her, and she was talking about how, you know, she knew she wanted to make something a bit provocative, a bit out there. And now she's doing amazing things across multiple states. So I was just someone I wanted to bring up because it was just the first thing that came to mind the minute that we had this discussion. Yes. And, and no, you're totally right. And, and actually she's based out of Atlanta. Like I, I believe she went to school in Atlanta or she lived in Atlanta for a long time, but yeah, I totally forgot about her, but yeah, she, um, yeah, that's someone who has a great marketing strategy. Cause I remember when she, I was in Atlanta um, living there when the first study vegan, I guess like pop, cause she started off as like a, um, a food truck. And there was just like lines out the door for 
like months and I was like this is like the best like yeah you, you just saw her everywhere in Atlanta like you would see like um trucks as billboards um with her like videos playing you, like um celebrities of course were were eating her burgers and she was posting about like it was a definitely a very um yeah she grew very fast and I think is very admirable and I think like, she started and where she is and I think like she's only been in business for the last three years or four years it's something like very small but she's already um yeah she's a few locations and i believe like on the board of a few other companies as well she's done yeah she's done great things but yeah i, I can't believe i forgot about her but yeah she's um yeah she's yeah she's doing great stuff <laughs> speaking of inspiration and people that we admire um what would you say are kind of your future goals as a female entrepreneur where do you want to see your business in like one year and five years let's say yeah, um, this is the question I think about all the time because I'm just like, oh, where am I going to take this? Like, what is going on? Um, I am kind of in a space of of personally just focusing more on like operational, like operations of what's happening in the business or so things I haven't had time to do because right now I am facing like a slower period with clients, um, which I'm like, oh, this is the time for me to actually focus on things I have not had time to do on my to-do list. So it's like, you know, just streamlining these processes and maybe upgrading my software, maybe um i believe uh irene me you, you and i have met at entrepreneur weekly that's like my first like thing of, like this is, like, i'm gonna network with the nuance community so it's like i just have been putting plans in place and i i yeah i think right now i'm kind of focusing on operationally but i mean i don't know in the next year like i it to be this huge like corporation thing where i'm just attached to it for 100 hours a week like that is not in yeah, that's not in my heart to do. Um, because I still want to kind of keep, yeah, my work life balance and still be able to enjoy life, but also be able to work, of course. Um, I don't know. Like I, I think about it all the time to be honest, and I, and I don't know really where I want to take it. I just know I don't want to be giving my entire life to it, but I still want it to be very successful and still be able to be hands on with it, um, uh, without kind of like losing myself or my life basically <laughs> yeah you kind of tied that full circle beautifully because previously you were saying how a lot of people have these goals for themselves but there's no passion behind it and I feel like you're doing a really good job in kind of just seeing how how things go of like preserving that passion that you have for it and mm -hmm. yeah just like making sure that you still enjoy it and that you're still holding on to yourself and I feel like it's a really beautiful thing Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's always my goal. Like, I, yeah, I definitely don't want, um, yeah, I don't want to be in a space where I'm I'm doing something I don't want to do and forcing myself to do that. And, and I do think kind of like actually going back to to Chop Vintage, like I, I did end up in that space, um, I think like the last two years where I was like, this thing started off as my passion and I just feel like I'm not passionate about it no more. And I am doing it to kind of just show up and people expect to be there. But I just, I, I wasn't into it. And and yeah, I think after a while, I was like, I had to just let this go. And I think and people still ask me, they're like, oh, are you going to bring back Chop Vintage? And are you going to, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. It's like, I don't, I don't think so. But yeah, I, I think it's important because I think people feel it. Like, I think people feel when you're super passionate about something and when you really want to be somewhere you want to do it versus like you being forced to do something that you don't really, you know, you, I think you show up differently. I think it's very different. For sure. And obviously, like having that passion is what gives you that momentum to keep forward, to keep moving forward. So what would you say for you are kind of your biggest inspirations, biggest motivations to keep your business going and to try and expand it and make it successful? Because I'm sure there's many times when you're just like, oh, I just want to get a job and do my nine to five and go home. Um, but yeah. I'm sure it takes a lot of motivation to be like, no, I'm going to continue working and try to make this as successful as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that's an everyday struggle. Like, I think it's always like, you know, there's always a thing of like, oh, I, I can always get a nine to five and, and have a different type of comfort level. But then there's also like something beautiful in a way of like challenging yourself to keep going, um, even when things feel slower or harder in your business. Um, yeah, I just try to remember, yeah, what those goals are and just remember, like, you know, just being able to do what I love at home and have flexibility and autonomy in my schedule was something that I've always wanted. Um, even when working nine to five businesses and even when I've worked in nine to five, I've, I've looked for those um, values in the companies I've worked for just to make sure that I stay true to myself because I definitely have worked at, I think like places where 
autonomy was not valued, where personal time and space was not valued, like uh, PTO, you had them, but they didn't want you to take them. Um, and I just knew how I felt when those values were not prioritized um, to where like, yeah, I think like I worked one space that was like that. And I was like, I can never do that again. Like if I go back to a nine to five job, which I have definitely gone to back and forth in, in, in the last yeah, 12 years of my career, um, and mostly I've worked for nine to five places, is like, I, I just try to pick companies that um, that they do a value autonomy and expression and of course diversity. And, you know, they want you to be there as much as you want to be there. So yeah, that's kind of like the way I kind of, I, I make sure to stay in and also just, you know, when I do go back to nine to five, which I'm sure I will at some point, um, yeah, that's totally fine. And, and I think you can still have, your career and also your autonomy and be able to be yourself all at the same time and still be able to work on your, your passion projects as well. So yeah. Balance. <laughs> yeah. Balance. Yes. 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 <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, great. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up now, but <clears throat> I'd like to make a space at the end. If one, where people can find you, if you want to, you know, click your website, social media, um, and if there's anything else that you really want to call out that we didn't touch on, if you have anything coming up on the horizon, let us know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everyone can find me um, at my website at www.lesliewashington.com. Um, Leslie is L-E-S-L-Y Washington. Um, and my social media accounts are linked there. Um, yeah. And if you want to chat, feel free to message me through my website and we could definitely have a little call and, and figure out what you need or if you just want to say hello that's that's totally fine as well awesome great well it was yeah. wonderful having you on the podcast leslie thank you so much and thank you it's been great being here thanks for joining us today be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast and if there's anything you'd like to hear us discuss reach out on instagram facebook or linkedin and as always stay optimistic <laughs>